Ah, good morning. Mark Conti reporting fresh and early in the morning on the the uh, the big debate. You saw the big debate. It was like a like a ten car pileup. <laughs> ten car pileup. It was like the talent show. You remember the fuck? <laughs> remember the talent show when you were when you were in a in high school and you had to perform. Oh, the big talent show, right? You got to show America what you what you're all about. That's what last night was reminiscent of. It reminds me like. I tell a story. <laughs> when um, I was a kid, right? I was, uh, I you know, I, I never aspired to be an actor or a musician as a little kid. I really, I can't even remember really what I aspired to be. I, I know some people very early on know what they wanted to be. I had no freaking idea, right? But I knew that there was, uh, we had a, uh, a talent show, right? A, 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 the school play. Right? It was a school play. And... Um, it was Rip Van Winkle. It was the third grade, right? Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> this is fucking... Right? And, um, you know, it's the story of a uh, guy who falls asleep for, I think, 20 years or so. <clears throat> and he wakes up and his his gun's all rusty and his, you know, his two teeth fell out. <laughs> and there he is again. But he, he remembers things exactly as they are. So I was... So I remember... St so, so there was an audition in the class... And of all the people in the class, I, I got up and I, I read the little piece and, and I got picked. I got picked by my classmates to not just be in the play, but to be Rip Van Winkle. So I was like, oh shit, I'm going to be Rip Van Winkle. And, I, and um, you know, I remember, I remember studying the lines and I had everything memorized, you know. My grandmother would help me, you know, would play it out in, in my... You know, in the living room, was you know, I was eight years old, seven, six, whatever the hell it was, seven years old. And I remember, man. And then, and then, the, and then the day came. The morning came. The morning of the play came. And it was just like I was like, the crowd. You see, the, you look out, you see the crowd. And suddenly, suddenly, everything you know, all that into anticipation, all that preparation, was right out the window. Can you perform? Can you do this? Do you even know what this is? Right? And it was, it was, you know, how did I do? I don't know. I thought it was kind of like I was, I was terrified by the crowd, right? The crowd overcame me. And uh, I mean, I remembered my lines and all that, but I just showed up, right? I didn't, I didn't knock the skin off the ball. I didn't come like I meant it. Like, this is my calling, right? Now, is that possible in the third grade? I don't know. <laughs> but it, it would have been interesting. Yeah. So, that was my impression <clears throat> overall of last night, right? Is that it, it seemed like, at first, a 10-car pileup. That's the Democrats, you know, uh, dirty doing. What you basically have is 20 candidates. I, I said it from the beginning. The whole idea is to stop the... The insurgency, the insurgent left, which is represented by Bernie Sanders, to to stop that momentum and try to get a uh, a mutable someone that they can mold and work with to fuck you over in the end, right? To get a mutable candidate, anybody but Sanders. And so last night you saw the first half of the shit sandwiches. I'm gonna I'll talk about each one of them. There was ten. I'll tell you who I think was was outstanding and who <laughs> I mean it's it's just from out of nowhere there's one candidate that stood out to me and I and I'll tell you why. I and um and I'll tell you who I think was totally disqualified, right? So now I know if you're not a if you're not a fan of the Democrats, I know you could turn it off, right? They're all a bunch of hypocrites and socialists and whatever the fuck they are, right? But the reality is someone is going to be standing next to Someone is someone is going to be standing on the stage challenging Donald Trump for the 2020 uh, uh, presidential position in this country to lead our great nation. And I could tell you that person was not on the stage last night. That's a get. That's I. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Hunter Alves. You want to bet Hunter Alves? Bet Hunter Alves. You want to bet? No. The the. The next president of the United States was not on that stage last night, but there was a couple of good, couple of good moments that we'll talk about. Right? So, they talked about, 
you know, they talked about guns, immigration, health care, war, poverty, money and politics, all democratic stuff, right? All the, all the things that the Democrats want and need, but have thus far been unable to deliver. Why? Because, because they're not leaders, right? They're, they're, they're politicians who follow their whole career. And in one day, they decide, I think I'll lead. And they fail because they don't know how to lead because all they did was follow. That's the difference with Trump. Trump, was, Trump is a leader. Trump is a, is a natural born leader. Right? He has, in, an, you know, in his own alpha male way, is, 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 a, uh, is a natural born leader. Now, what he's leading people <laughs> towards, well, that's a different story, right? Which I just, you know, I know you, you know, I know, you know, I know, you know that I disagree with Trump on economic policy and a lot of other things. Right? But so let's go through the list. So I'll, I'll just say the biggest flop of the night, the biggest disappointment, we'll start there, was was Beto O'Rourke. The guy is a is a shit sandwich par excellence. A right? total total stare into the camera. Uh, 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 uh. He looked like he was so out of his league. He, I mean, he has the voice. He has the, the size. <laughs> he's tall. He's got the big, you know, the low voice. And he's believable. You know, he's got that, that whole thing going on. But what comes out of his mouth is just pure uh, platitude. He refuses to accept uh, Medicare for all in this country. He's still about, you know, privatized uh, insurance. He's a failure, right? So you'll watch his numbers. I mean, he was the great white hope, right? He was the big guy that was going to come along and the big Texan is going to come along. And he's going he's to stuff everybody and he's going to win. And now you're seeing him start to drop. And that's what, the, that's what these debates are all about, right? Can somebody beat Trump? Yeah. Somebody could beat Trump. Some, could, do I want somebody to beat Trump? Yeah. Trump, one-term president. Let's go. Get off the bowl, Chucky. Get off the bowl. Right, so, so Beto O'Rourke flop. Amy Klobuchar. I'm gonna put her as flop number two. It's just again a centrist Democrat arguing on a stage full of progressive-leaning candidates for Medicare for All is arguing against it. All right? That's that's it's just a disqualifier right there. Goodbye. Step off the stage. She's articulate. She's obviously bright as a prosecutor or whatever the hell she was right but not presidential not presidential at all people are not going to rally no enthusiasm no no excitement there was no excitement on that stage they were they were me in the third grade they went out there right nobody challenged you know you got 10 people on the stage right that's the way the democrats wanted it you got to get out there and and elbow your way to the front you got to make your voice known. Don't, you know, fucking sit around waiting for the rules. Who, who, if anything, who taught, taught, you know, who taught the lesson of politics in 2016 that you don't wait for people to pick you, right? It's Trump, right? Trump is Trump was the master at that, right? So, so none of the candidates did it. Amy Klobuchar, shit sandwich, goodbye. She's only one percent now. She'll fall to nobody. Uh, other one, John Delaney. Uh, yeah, Delaney. John Delaney. He looked like um, <laughs> he looks like the the drummer from uh, the drummer from uh, what is it? Fucking Red Hot Chili Peppers, right? <laughs> well, that comic, you know, uh, Will Farrell. <laughs> his bald head and shit, and his, it, it matters, right? It matters. That that imagery matters. Right? Are you believable? Are you going to be able to? Convince the majority of people that you're the guy to lead the country, and um, I, I just think that he didn't—he didn't have anything outstanding to say. He was just like aggressively trying to push his way into the conversation, right? He didn't. There, there's nothing unique. The other one was Tim Ryan, who had this had this kind of terrified scare uh, stare about him. Tulsi Gabbard blew him out of the water on a uh, military question. That he said he would stay in 
we need a constant pres presence in Afghanistan and, and uh, Iraq. And, of course, Tulsi Gabbard, that's, that's really, you know, I'll, I'll talk about her in a second. You know, that's her thing. And she jumped down his throat, and that was her moment. His, his moment, <laughs> her moment became taking his moment away from him, like taking his lunch away. Uh, so I would, I would exclude that, those four so far. The other guy is Inslee. Let's, let's exclude him, too, because he's, I mean, he's right on the issue. He's uh, Mr. Climate Change, Mr. Inslee, governor of Washington. Right? And he was talking about, hey, listen, you know, 2050, we're not going to be here, right? That's, that's what the science says, right? All the, all the species on the earth are gone. You know, fucking giraffes are gone, right? Everything's gone. Right? We're, we're, we're losing, we're, there's too many people. I mean, don't, don't be offended, but that's what's happening, right? <laughs> Is it God's will? <laughs> I don't know. But he was, he's Mr. Climate Change. If you don't have a climate, what good is health care? What good is, uh, you know, what good is getting money out of politics if, if, the fucking, if you can't breathe? Right? So he's right on the subject, but it, it, just, it just didn't, again, not presidential. He's kind of, he, he doesn't have that, what the hell are these guys doing? These guys are knocking down a telephone pole. Look at this shit. They're taking down a light post. This shit's been going on for a long time, man. This shit just came down. I think it hit the guy. <laughs> They're screaming at each other. Ah, the bridge. See the bridge? Drivers out on arrows. Whoo! Beautiful day in the park, man. It's hot. It's hot in New York, man. It's very hot and steamy and got to get outside, man. Fucking really hot. It's like the 80s. I don't like the heat. I, I take the cold, man. I'm out here all year round, right? <laughs> so who else? Inslee, out. Uh, the other one, I'm going with the worst first. I would, I would also, uh, Fidel Castro, or Julian Castro, whatever his name is. They all, they're all out trying to Spanish one another, him and Beto O'Rourke. Beto O'Rourke spent, spent like almost two full minutes speaking Spanish because he pan, because he's all about, I don't know. Spanish, right? So they were trying to out Spanish each other, him and Castro, who was an actual Spanish, a Spaniard. I think he's Mexican. And and where where he fails is he, he was talking about making immigration not a crime, making illegal immigration. So if you come into the country, it's not a crime, illegally. You jump over the wall, you swim across the river, not a crime if you can get away with it. Right? And it's a civil problem. I, I fundamentally disagree with that. Right, All of the candidates are anti-gun, which I disagree with all of them. The Second Amendment is the Second Amendment. There should be the right to bear arms. End of discussion. End of discussion, really. And immigration is, in my view, is pretty much the same as well, is that if you are an American citizen, you step to the front of the line. What is so hard to understand about that? Right? The whole stage is talking about immigration and the, and the poor jerk that tried to swim across the, the Rio Grande with his kid and drowned. And what about the, what about the, the, the 400,000 Americans that we know of right now living homelessly? What about, uh, you know, Skid Row in L.A. and the, the homeless here in New York on the subway every single freaking day? I didn't hear any, not a single one of them talked about the poverty in this country, but they all talked about the need to, 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 to open the doors for immigration, immigrants. That's why none of them will be president, not a single one of them. Right? So, so Castro, I, I, I take him off the table. He didn't seem presidential. He seemed too, too methodical, too, too uh, cerebral, right? Everybody, they all playing it safe. Every one of them, right? Almost. Uh, so, so Cory Booker, right? That's Cory Booker, right? Not presidential, in my view. He talked about how it was being black in Newark. He wanted you to know that he's from Newark in a black neighborhood. Now, he chooses to be there, right? Because Cory Booker takes a lot of money from Big Pharma. Cory Booker's a snake in the grass, right? He talks about, you know, my community. Now he's black. Mr. Black, 
He's the, he wanted to distinguish himself as, see, I'm the black candidate. I'm black. Don't you see? I'm black. How black I am. Right? I mean, his face is black, his, but his ears are white. You notice? <laughs> Watch the video. He's got a black face and white ears. So I guess he's kind of like a mixed. Uh, anyway, he wanted you to know that he's from Newark, where the blacks live. Right? I'm for the blacks. Right? He wanted you to know that how how it uh, just seemed it just seemed comical. He he seemed to me like a cartoon character. Like he's all bubbly. He's not not presidential. Not clearly not savvy on the on the on the issues. Um. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't I don't see him as as anything really. His performance was was safe and mediocre, right? So, I, I mean, none of them. All right. So here, so who's left? There's only two left. Now Elizabeth Warren and Bill De Blasio. <laughs> Bill fucking De Blasio stood. On the furthest extent of the stage, they stuck him all the way on the end in the corner, and he fucking came out swinging. He came out saying, "Immigrants, they're not your fucking problem. It's the corporations." <laughs> huh? uh, he was, you know, he he pandered a little bit, and and he and in the, the final analysis, he dropped the ball when they asked him, "What's the one thing that that what's the most concerning thing to you?" And he said, "Russia." Oh, you jerk. You idiot. You fool. You dropped the ball. <coughs> you had it. You were running with the ball, and then you dropped it, you moron. <coughs> but really, honestly, Bill de Blasio... Hold on a second. <coughs> really did an outstanding job in, in the, at the talent show. He stood out from the pack. He was unapologetic for speaking up. At first, it sounded like like the drunk guy in the bar with his mustache flailing, trying to get noticed, right? And then and then it evolved into, wait a second, let's listen to this guy, what he has to say. And then it evolved into he's leading the debate. His tone, he set the tone for the debate. Now I know he's a one percent fool, and the reality is I live in New York City. And Bill de Blasio is a total phony. He wanted you to know that he has a black wife and a black child. The NYPD hates de Blasio. His approval rating in the city is probably less than 30%. Right? He's not a liked character. The Post, New York Post, hates him. Thinks he's an idiot. Right? We'll see how they spin it today because he did an outstanding job. But uh, essentially, De Blasio is a is a all talk, right? It's what Amy Klobuchar. She had a great line. She said, uh, <laughs> "He's all foam, no beer." <laughs> right? That's what De Blasio. De Blasio is all foam, no beer. Right? He's a he's a he's a big he's a big white guy. He's like seven feet or whatever, however tall he is. He's got a short black woman and two very stylish kids. I right, two New York hipster kids, right? You see the kid out with a big afro and shit. It's cool. They, they're very cool people, right? But as a president, he he doesn't have the he doesn't have the 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 credentials or the the he has the credentials, but not the stamina to 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 stand on the stage with someone like Trump because Trump will crush this guy. Trump will crush him because. De Blasio is for sale. There's too, he has too many skeletons in his in his pocket. And I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave De Blasio alone because I don't think he's going to make it because people don't. I I don't know. He's just, he's just forget about it. He's not going to be the president, right? And then there's Elizabeth Warren. So let's talk about the favorite. Did Elizabeth Warren do what she was supposed to do? Did any of them do what they were supposed to do? Elizabeth Warren. Uh, and Tulsi Gabbard, I didn't. Uh, I'll talk about Tulsi Gabbard. I'm sorry, I forgot about Tulsi. So, so Tulsi Gabbard. Um, I, my here's my opinion of her. Right, I don't like militants. Right, I don't like army kids, army brats, people that always talk about the military 
and how everybody should be so so uniform. Yes, sir. No, sir. You know, I don't like that shit. I don't like people like that. And the more I get to know Tulsi Gabbard and study her stuff, I like her. I like her policy. I think she would make a wonderful Secretary of State or Secretary of Defense because she has that background. But as a president, I, I, and, and again, I, I had a personal experience with her where I was, I was very close to her and I, I actually tried to in, engage her at that uh, convention here in New York, at her rally in New York. And she was just like a militant. She snubbed me like, like, like I was some, you know, oh no, I'm not talking to you. I'm gonna go talk to those people over there. Walk right by me like cold. Sorry, Tulsi. Sorry, Tulsi, you gotta win that respect. So, I, I don't see her, I don't see her as presidential. I don't back her as a, as a legitimate candidate. Sorry, I mean, I know. People love her, they think she's the new Bernie Sanders. She has integrity, she has, she's right on the policies, most of them. But she doesn't have that star quality. She doesn't have that, we're not ready for an Eisenhower. Right? We're not ready for an Eisenhower. We need a we need a firebrand. If you want to take down Donald Trump, you need a firebrand. And I'm just sorry, Tulsi Gabbard is not it. So let's talk about, in my view, so let's talk about the favorite uh, Elizabeth Warren, Pocahontas. Oh, could you imagine Donald Trump standing on the stage with Pocahontas? She's noticeably the smartest of the crowd. She's articulate. She's, she's knowledgeable. She's a PhD. She knows if anybody in, 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 in the Congress and Senate knows something about Wall Street, it's her. Right? She was a, a professor of finance or whatever at Harvard. And she knows all about the banking industry and the scams they pull and the ripoffs and, 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 and the predatory lending. Right? But did she show up to win? No. She didn't win. She didn't win that debate. She, she, she showed up playing it safe because she thinks she's the front runner. Right? Did any of them dam try to damage the front runner? Did any of them say, Elizabeth Warren, you're a fucking phony. Right? You voted for the war. You know, you voted for these wars and, and you, you, you flipped on policy so many times that your head will spin. Right? Did anybody call out Elizabeth Warren? You lied about being from being Native American, you Pocahontas, because you know Trump's going to lay into her on that if, if she should be so graced to be on that stage. So, so did Elizabeth Warren win the debate? Did somebody win the debate? I would say Bill de Blasio won the debate because he came out like a guy who has nothing to lose. He was like, fuck this, man. I got nothing to lose. Fuck it. I'm not ready to... I'm the mayor of New York City, man. I don't give a fuck about these people, right? He had that, that tone. He had the right tone. Like, I'm going for broke. Right? Of all of the candidates on the stage. And even in the, there's a, there was a little interview I watched where he, he spoke with uh, Mr. Potato Head at TYT. He spoke with Chank Yuga. And it was a good interview. You should watch it. He, he talked about he, he was real, right? The, the mayor of New York is like, I mean, it's like, it's such a hard job, right? I, I remember when, when Bloomberg was the mayor and Bloomberg, when he first got hit with that press and hit with that, the, when he got elected and the first couple of times he was out in front of the camera, he was horrible. And then towards the end, he was a master at the, at the media. And de Blasio is now showing signs of that, that master amplitude of, of the media. The ability to know that, hey, you only got, if I only, you're only going to give me three minutes, I'm going to make it a good three minutes. Right? I'm going to be loud, I'm going to be boisterous, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to command the conversation. In this wreck of ten cars, in this pileup, my car is going to be on top, and I'm going to, with no dents, right? Because I got nothing to lose, right? I'm, I'm only, I'm a shit one percenter, right? Nobody even knows who I am, 
right? Right? Now they know who he is, right? A couple of million people know who he is. We'll see how the spin machine goes. So, tonight is the big event. Tonight you have the real, the real candidate, in my view, which is Bernie Sanders. And on that stage will be shit sandwich Joe Biden, who will... I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. I'll talk more about that after it happens. Right? My prediction is Bernie Sanders is going to win that one, right? So, so who won? Who won the debate? I think it was Hillary. I think it was. I almost said Hillary Clinton. I think it was Elizabeth Warren's debate to lose, and I think she lost it. I think De Blasio, all the rest of them are pretty much out of the out of the way until they can get a game changer. They still seem to be figuring it out. They're still in the third grade trying to understand what, what it is, that this is a frame, uh, this is entertainment, sort of. Like they don't get it, right? De Blasio gets it because he's a New Yorker. Elizabeth Warren gets it because she's been around the block a few times, right? But the rest of them are shit sandwiches. So it was, it was Elizabeth Warren's to lose, and I, I give the victory to Bill de Blasio. So, so Mark's County reporting. Become a Patreon of this channel as we move into the uh, the presidential, you know, election season. <laughs> All right, and um, truth telling. I'm one one person in the park. All right, I don't have a team. I do my own editing. I hold my own camera. <laughs> I don't even edit anymore. <laughs> so become a Patreon of this channel so we can make it grow. Because damn straight if YouTube is going to help me grow, help us grow, right? Well, that was the other thing. I'll close in that, right? The, 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 overwhelming, the overwhelming theme of that was pick me, pick me, pick me. And I didn't get a sense that any of them were for you. You know what I mean? It was, a, it was more about my career as opposed to that the, the job of the career is to make your your life easier and that was the fundamental thing that I didn't get in that in that debate so so just food for thought Marcus Conte reporting <laughs>